Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we're gonna take a look at how we can define macros in Clojure. So let's get started. Cool, so essentially um, a macro is a way that lets us write code that writes code. And I'll show you why that would be useful. So in this example, I wanna create a function that basically you pass it a function or expression. It'll tell us how long that expression took to evaluate and then give us the result. The API for it would look something like time taken and then we pass through an expression, we'd evaluate this, we'd print out this took however many seconds to evaluate or milliseconds to evaluate and return us two. To start off, I wanna actually create a function that's just gonna basically wait. So I'm gonna define a function here called wait return. It's gonna take in seconds and a result. And then we'll spread sleep for however many seconds. So we're going to times our seconds by 1000 and then we'll return the result. Evaluate this. So now we can basically say wait return hey and pass it in two seconds and we'd wait two seconds for hey to be returned. Awesome. So now let's look at how we can do this time taken function. Also, I've never used this in videos before, but we can actually just make a comment section well, comment function, and this takes in expressions and they don't get evaluated. So we can evaluate comment, we get null, but then we can evaluate the expressions within comment and they work. So let's get started. I'm just gonna clean this up. Let's get started creating this time taken function. So I'm gonna define a function here called time taken. And I'm just gonna actually move this below it and move this inside of here. And with time taken, what we want to do is we basically just want an expression. We want to time how long that expression took to evaluate. So we need a start time and I'm going to use system nano time for this. So we can use some Java interrupt and we can go get from system. We can evaluate the nano time from that and this will return us the nano time. So let's use this to get the start time. So I'm going to go let start and that's going to equal that time and then we're going to evaluate the expression here and then afterwards we're going to need the end time so i'm just going to quickly grab this and use it to get the end time also and then we need to get the time difference so let's take yeah time taken or well, time taken is the name of this function so total time and then we're going to take the end time minus the start time so start time and then i want to divide this by a hundred thousand because that will give us milliseconds. And then let's wrap this in double and let's make this a double. So now we need the result of the expression. So let's create a new variable here called result and that will be the result of this expression. And then here what we can do is we could say print line took total time to evaluate and then return the result. So if we evaluate this, we now have time taken, but it's not gonna work exactly how we think now. Let's evaluate this time taken function. We get an issue here, and that's because this expression has already, already been evaluated by the time it hits here. So this function is actually using the result of this evaluation. So we're gonna get two here, and then two here, and obviously this can't be run as a function. So what we can do here is pass through an anonymous function. And if we evaluate this now, cool, we see it took 0.1 milliseconds to evaluate and we got two. So that's cool, but that's not the original API I wanted. I wanted to pass through a function like this. Using macros will allow us to do that. So let's convert this time taken into a macro. But before we do that, I wanna show you syntax quoting. So you may be familiar that we can use quotes to get a symbol. So we can make like a function here, list one, two, three. And if we use well, if we don't have the quote, then we'll get a list returned with one, two, and three inside of it. But if we quote this, then we get the actual symbol value, which is basically the code. But you might not know about backspace quoting. So if we used a backspace here and evaluated this, we'd get the, the namespace where list comes from, and then one, two, and three. But what we could do now is we could define a variable here. Let's call it var one, one, evaluate this, and now instead of using one here, we could use this tilde symbol and write var one and evaluate this. And now we see that this variable that we passed through has been replaced with what it actually is. 
So that's going to come in handy pretty soon. So I'm just going to get rid of this. Well, actually, I'm going to keep it. Let's keep that in this comment. So let's get started actually creating a macro. So it's going to be very similar to the function that we wrote. So in actual fact, I'm going to just copy this whole thing and comment the top one out. And let's just copy paste it here. And the first thing I want to do is not define a function, but define a macro. And to do that, we use def macro. This takes in the name of our macro, which time taken is cool. The arguments that we're going to pass through it, our expression is cool. So now the first thing we want to do after we've defined it as a macro is return a backspace quoted list. And now we don't need this anymore, these brackets around here anymore, because this expression won't be evaluated here. It'll be evaluated inside of the actual function here. We can replace it with tilde, and now it'll execute the function that we pass through. So now we actually are going to pass through something that will look like this copy this and it'll be it'll work like that let's see what happens now so if we evaluate this run time taken so now we see another issue it's trying to get these symbols from our local names from this current namespace but they don't belong in this namespace they belong in this let binding so to get around that let's just clear this we just use the pound sign. So we can put the pound sign here and this will let the macro know that these symbols are evaluated within this macro. So let's add more of these. And if we evaluate this now and then run this, that's perfect. We can actually also improve this print line a little bit. We can show the expression that was evaluated. So we can take this and if we quote, the expanded expression, evaluate this and then execute this, we can see what expression took how long to evaluate, which is really cool. Awesome, so now we're nearly finished with our time taken macro, but what I actually wanted to do is, I want it to allow us to pass through multiple forms, one plus one, as well as this wait return. But right now it can't, it can only take a single expression. So let's update this a bit to use multiple expressions. So the first thing we need to do is make this macro take in multiple arguments. And we do that the same way we do with functions by using and expression. And then what we need to do is evaluate all these expressions. So we can use the do function. So do basically takes in like a function body with multiple expressions. So plus one, one, it'll evaluate that to two. And then we can do plus one, two, and that'll return three. But it will evaluate all these expressions within its body. So let's use that here, put do, and then evaluate our expressions here. And then if we evaluate this, let's see what happens. So we can see that this time taken is no longer giving us an error because we can take in multiple arguments. I'm just gonna clear this up here and let's evaluate this. And now we're getting an error. So to see what this error is, I'm gonna use the macro expand one function and that will expand this macro out and show us what code is being generated from time taken. So let's just copy this and I'm going to wrap this with macro expand one. And then I'm going to pass through the symbol by using the quote and let's evaluate this. Let's clear it up. And now we can see that our macro is expanded and we can see kind of what it's doing. And here we can see what result is being bound to and it's being bound to this. So let's copy this out here and just see what that looks like in a more nicely formatted way. Okay, so what it's doing is this is being passed through as a list. And that's because when you pass through multiple arguments into a function, they become a list. But we don't want it to look like a list. We want it to look like this. So to do that, all we need to do is add an at symbol here. And now if we evaluate this and we evaluate this, and we look at our do function here, we can copy it out, put it in here, and we can see that it now looks how we want it to look. Awesome, so this should work now. So let's get rid of this, clear this up, evaluate this, and evaluate this. Cool, and we can see that um, these expressions took this long to evaluate and returned hey, returned hey. 
And that's essentially how to use def macro. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any ideas for videos that you want, please put a comment in the description and I'll get to them as soon as possible. I promise I'm getting to everything. Um, it just takes a while. If you're new, please like and subscribe on this video. It does help me personally feel better about myself. Cheers.